as you point out, uh, Bob, it is going to be uh, challenging, uh, not only for people in the community who may see you know, a handful of patients of, with RCC per year, but even for us in the academic circles, you know, you have nivolumab, you have cabozantinib, you have axitinib. How, how do you uh, sequence which one will be number two, number three, number four? Uh, so I think it will be interesting. Uh, and then, of course, if the FDA approved linventanib plus everolimus, that is also uh, another uh, bona fide uh, regimen uh, to a contender to contend with. Uh, I would like to add to the linventanib, uh, you know, what was mentioned is that also the OS with linventanib everolimus was an impressive 25.5 months. Similar, very similar to the median OS with nivolumab. So here is a combination. And in my view, this revives Everolimus because we were saying that Everolimus got a beating uh, because it was compared to uh, cabozantinib and to nivolumab and it was falling out of favor. But here, in combination with linventinib, there may be uh, an opportunity, a role for it to come. So the way I would treat my patients would be, I would choose a VGFR TK on the first line. I think Pazopanib, uh, based on the compares and the uh, Pisces data and our own experience in using that, even when you take into account sinitinib 2-1 schedule, I still believe Pazopanib is, uh, uh, is the preferred agent because it's uh, more tolerable with less hand foot, less stomatitis, certainly less myelosuppression, and it's easier to manage adverse events when you're given it on a continuous uh, basis instead of doing 2-1, especially managing hypertension. Post VGF RTK with Pazopanib, I would do nivolumab number two, and then I think once cabozantinib is on the market, I think it will have to be number three. And then we'll see if Len Ventanib plus Everimus uh, came aboard, it might be, uh, we might look at it in the third line or even in second line for some patients. Again, as Martin mentioned, you don't have to look at just the efficacy outcome from these trials, but also the patient's own uh, uh, situation, what comorbid illnesses they have. And if they have uh, comorbid illnesses, that would make difficult for uh, for us to pr uh, prescribe in agents that targets VGF because they have hypertension and they're already on four blood pressure medications or they have diabetes, then I may go with definitely with nivolumab and, uh, as the, uh, the second line. So Martin, you've heard the MD Anderson approach to metastatic kidney cancer. What's the memorial approach? So I think the one um, important addition that I would make to that is that we can uh, lose sight of the fact that we want to push the field further beyond these new exciting um, uh, results that we've now summarized here today. And I think the one thing that uh, most of us would agree on that that's important in further developing strategies for kidney cancer uh, is to bear in mind that combinations with targeted immunotherapy, uh, at least for the early data that we have, are showing significant promise. It's too early to say whether these are going to be uh, lasting effects, but we know that the rate of response to a, um, a checkpoint inhibitor therapy uh, um, seems to be higher, at least in the phase one and phase two setting, when it is paired with another agent. So the one thing uh, that I would add to what's been said before about sequencing these agents is that we have to bear in mind what clinical trial opportunities patients have. And I think that's relevant not only for us who are conducting these clinical trials at academic centers, but also for medical oncologists that may be referring patients to us. If you have a patient who is, you know, fit, wants to be aggressive about their therapy, uh, then sometimes it may actually um, uh, not be uh, the best next step for them to go on single agent nivolumab because it can close doors for them to go onto clinical trials that combines checkpoint inhibitor therapies, either two checkpoint inhibitors or a checkpoint inhibitor with uh, VEGF-directed agent. So the one thing I would add is, and that certainly is important for my own practice, is that you have to, uh, you know, um, sometimes plan two steps ahead and see if you don't have a clinical trial opportunity now, is this the type of patient that wants to push the envelope in the future and may want to consider a trial? And maybe then it's uh, of interest for the patient to first go on cabozantinib, uh, knowing that nivolumab will always be an option for them now that it's FDA approved see if there's a trial that might be available as a next step beyond that before you then give them um, the, uh, you know, the checkpoint inhibitor in, in case that doesn't pan out for them. So certainly in the frontline setting for now, knowing the data that we have, if I don't have a trial for the patient, I treat them with a, um, with a TKI and I would agree uh, that Pazopanib would be my agent of choice. Um, beyond that, um, 
I think one would see, you know, what's available in terms of combinations. Um, I don't know that the combination of lenvatinib and everolimus is going to take off. Um, we don't know yet if there is a phase three strategy at this point or not. But there are other combinations that are going to be very relevant in the very near future for us, and, um, not only on clinical trials, but some of these trials are going to read out in the future. Uh, and that's, um, I think, of relevance to our patients.